The Sony Xperia 5 Mark II. An absolute marvel of a phone 2021. This is the phone to get, even though it's pricey. Let me get into that. Design. Not much different from the Xperia 5, the original one. However, uh, when we compare it to the modern flagships, the good thing is this. The camera bump is very, very, very tiny. It does not protrude, so you won't have issues with that. It is slippery as hell, the back plate, and it's a fingerprint matter because glass in front, glass in back, that's it. However, I got this little thing from Sony the moment I bought the phone. This is bought for my own money, and if it's perfectly, it's not clunky, it doesn't make the phone that much bigger. So, kudos for that Sony. Headphone jack, it's great, it's good to have, even though most of us have switched to wireless earbud, earbuds or headphones or whatever, but it's a great addition. Two things I do not like. Number one, I already said the back is slippery as hell, but then you place on something like this, matte plastic, issue solved, camera bump disappeared. However, the bottom speaker is very, very thin and very, very loud. And even though it does attract a certain amount of lint, like when I'm focusing on it right here on the camera, you can see it, but in real life, it does not attract that much attention. However, the top speaker is different it's narrower or smaller but then it's like taller that's where lint comes in three days in i had lint all over it and i cannot really clean it that's the only gripe i have with the design performance you already know snapdragon 865 in other respects and all of that like go to gsmarina.com and you will definitely read all of these it's a standard flagship eight gigabytes of ram and even though some people might think it's uh quite less for a 2020 flagship trust me i had more issues on the xiaomi mi 10 ultra with 12 gigabytes than on this one with eight gigabytes display this is an absolute marvel of a display 450 ppi all at 120 hertz um what does that mean in real life Watching movies, 21 by 9 aspect, ratio, it's absolutely gorgeous to watch movies on. It's better than any other display. And you're going to hear gimmicky marketing like 1 billion colors and this and that. And like, no, no, this is the display to go for. Um, Sony Bravia TVs are very, very uh, famous TVs. They put that technology into a phone, 120 hertz refresh rate on Xperia. It's so lightning fast, especially coupled with this software. It's so freakingly good. I cannot even display. If you want to tweak your display, you're going to go into the settings and then you have image quality, creator mode, standard mode, uh, video enhancer. And then if you want to adjust your white balance, you can do that easily in the creator mode. Uh, again, you can set it manually, warmer, colder, it doesn't matter. If you pull down the nightlight, it's going to set it to warmer colors immediately on its own. So if you want to keep your eyes safe, you can do that. If not, if you want uh, actually like correct colors, if you're editing movies and video on the go, you can do that. There are literally no words as to which I can like improperly uh, talk about this display. And you cannot definitely see it on the camera, but it's possibly quite possibly most probably the best display on the phone in 2020 and it even top samsung because of the 450 ppi 1080 display six inches absolutely amazing i rather watch movies on this than on my tablet uh software software is ridiculously minimalistic and it's lightning fast um i really had no issues with it i had no apps uh crashing in the background from time to time, this is an issue with the most Sony phones. What's going to happen is that your Wi-Fi is actually going to start getting a little buggy. Um, you just restart your phone and that's it. That's the only software issue I had. I had no apps crashing, no apps closing in the background. Um, I bought this one in China. I have Google Photos. I got the Play Store. I got everything. So pretty much all good. Performance is also ridiculously good. I'm not going to show you any video games because there's no point. Uh, again, Snapdragon 865, if you run video games on Snapdragon 835 phones, like, I don't know, XZ1 and whatnot, it's going to run fluently. What I do like is that once you go into a video game and you go into gaming mode, which I do not have here. Okay, let's say for the sake of it, I'm going to run Implosion. And thank you, Rayark, for finally updating. So, 
You have the gaming mode you swipe from the top and then you have focus settings. Release RAM, turn off adaptive brightness, you can disable, enable things left and right. Uh, game mode balance, performance, this is going to raise your FPS. Battery life, this is going to lower your FPS. You can play on your charger, so if your battery is low, you can plug in your charger. Bypass the battery, so your phone doesn't overheat and the battery stays safe and for me this is a great option you came back from work you want to chill out but your battery is low you want to wait you don't want to wait for it to charge you kick it on your bed you plug in your power adapter or you just plug it in your socket you turn this on bypass the battery play it like you would play a playstation or any other console directly from the outlet and you're good to go so they have done a great job with this gaming mode um you can, of course, record, take screenshots. I'm, there's really no point in showing you any gameplay because on a phone such as this one, they run buttery smooth. Speakers, one left, one right, both front facing. They are so good that my first impression was HTC One M8 all the way back from, if I remember, 2014. Um, let me see if I have music that is not copyright. I have actually, er, I should have my own music here actually, yes I do, I, I recorded this myself. So, as you can see, the speakers are very crisp, at the highest volume there is no distortion, the phone vibrates slightly and I am not talking about the dynamic vibration system, I'm talking from the actual quality of the sound. Um, battery life, I purposely did not charge it, right now I am on 15%, and if we look at battery life, uh, screen on time here is 5 hours 12 minutes. I kept it at 120 hertz all the time. I do not go down to 60. Um, as you can see here, this is overnight. I charged it before bed, had some light YouTube and so on, whatnot. Slept and then the entire morning of video games and whatnot. Typically my day starts at 7 o'clock, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. Right now it's 3.24. 40 minutes of YouTube, one and a half hours of Asphalt 9, this is at 60 frames per second, not 30. Um, camera, Facebook, I'm in China, Taobao, two hours of streaming, mu streaming music, voice calls, uh, a little bit of 9 gag, again, streaming music over QQ, some Instagram, and so on and so forth. I uh, used the camera for about 10 or 15 minutes to record a video and so on. So, technically, five and a half hours of pretty heavy usage on one charge. Uh, the battery life is absolutely great. Uh, now, this is not a objectively good or bad thing. Subjectively, I come from Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra, where the entire phone charges from 0 to 100 in like 15 minutes. This one, you're going to get from 0 to 50 in about maybe 20 minutes, more or less. And the higher the percentage of the battery while you're charging, it's going to start charging exponentially slower. So by the time you reach 80%, I think that in order to get from 80 to 100, it takes like 40 minutes or something like that. Sony does this in order to preserve battery life. And I understand it for the longevity. You buy a phone this expensive, especially with these specs, it's going to last you for a couple of years. Some people might not like it, some people might. For me, it's very difficult to get used to this after using the Xperia, sorry, after using the Mi 10 Ultra. It really is difficult, but I understand the logic of it. Given that most people won't game on this, this is not a phone on which you're going to game 24-7. If that's what you're looking for, 
Is it a great experience for gaming? Yes, but the battery life does not complement gamers in such a way. Um, but if you're a photographer, if you're a cameraman, if you like to consume medias and watch movies, I'm pretty sure that without playing video games, I had days where I would get like eight hours of screen on time from just YouTube, social media, and so on. Uh, of course, you have the Photo Pro app, you have the Cinema Pro app. I will leave a description, sorry, a link in the description for a tutorial from another channel on how to use the Photo Pro app. Uh, most people find it cumbersome, I understand. However, if you go into the menu and you turn on HDR, pretty much you're going to have a great experience in using manual given that you're using HDR just by meddling with exposure values if you do not know how to use a manual. Just by doing this little, you're going to get better photos than actually using the stock camera app as in point and shoot. If you're using point and shoot, you're going to have a good time as well. Not enough battery. Sorry for that. You have three lenses. Uh, what I do not like about the camera is that the wide lens has a ton of distortion. It just does more than on other phones. But if you're outside, if you're shooting panoramas, if you're shooting sculptures, something that's far away from you, that distortion is not going to be noticeable. The rear cameras are a significant upgrade in comparison to the last year's Xperia 5. I did not like the cameras on the Xperia 5 that much. These are miles better. The selfie camera is eh. It's better than the Xperia 5. I think this is due to the software, not the hardware. It's, I think, the same 8 megapixel shooter. But it's better. Uh, if you are a selfie addict, when you go outside, when you go and take selfies in a greatly lit environment, you're going to have a great time. You really will. But the moment you enter a room or you have challenging night shots from a bar, the rear cameras are going to perform miraculously well. Selfie camera, eh, not so much. Um, I hope this covers pretty much everything. So what's the conclusion? What's the takeaway? Is it an expensive phone? Yes, it is. But I lived in Japan for a year. I know that in Japan, they either make it premium or they do not make it at all. So what's the takeaway? You're going to pay a pretty penny, but this phone by design is elegant. It's light in the hand. It's so good for consuming media. It's great for social media, uh, photos, gaming, whatever. Again, charging time is the only gripe I have with the phone. I understand why they did it. Is it a hefty price to pay? Yes. Is it worth it? Honestly, in my opinion, I keep alternating between 20 phones. I know I don't post that much on my channel. I just don't. If I don't have anything nice to say about a phone, um, most usually I'm just going to pass. I'm an advocate for Xiaomi phones if your budget is limited. If you're going to spend, I don't know, let's say 500 euros on a phone, $600, you're going to go for a Xiaomi 10, 10 Pro, 10T, maybe 11 if your budget is a little bigger. However, if you can't afford to buy this one, I promise you, if you buy this over a Samsung or a Xiaomi or a Huawei and definitely Apple, this beats Apple in every possible segment. Every. I'm not even going to talk about that trashy company. Go for this one. You're not going to be disappointed. And I definitely, definitely um, suggest buying this one over the Xperia 1 Mark II for subjective preferences. Smaller, easier to handle, better display, as in fluent faster, 4K on the phone, not that noticeable, and the battery lasts longer. Any questions that you might have, leave them down in the comment section. I'll be sure to answer them to the best of my abilities.